walking around is uh, Alex Bertoncini. <laughs> His uh, semifinal opponent, Rob Castellan, playing Reanimator, conceded the match basically wanting to help Alex in his player of the year race and uh, we'll have to see if Alex can uh, take it down the last time we were in Boston um, we uh, we had a different champion was it uh, what well, was Dan Jordan in the standard portion right yeah um, trying to remember the, the legacy portion what do you, I don't the even numbers. know Oh, oh we we've any never had any boards. We, we, uh, yeah. A judge is coming over and asking us a question, but the answer, sadly, for the judge is no, we don't, <laughs> uh, we don't have what he's looking for. For those of you who are at home watching right now, we're going to see uh, the final game of Bobby Sullivan versus Kurt Spice, no rug versus you, <laughs> you white, <laughs> blue white, versus stone blade. Ew, blood. stone blade. <laughs> <laughs> or woo, yeah. stone blade, depending woo. on your opinion of these things. Woo, stone blade. <laughs> <laughs> I think the official order would be Woo Stoneblade, as in Woo 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 Woo. woo, woo. So. <laughs> <laughs> Though the way most of us have been doing it, it's always been UW. But Woo Woo. Now I'm gonna say we talked earlier about missed marketing opportunities, and I, I think I brought up the U.S. Nationals from many years ago, where they had the ESPN camera right on the attractive Magic player who jumps up into the arms of his beautiful girlfriend after winning a match to make the top eight and the camera had just moved away missing it a, another potential missed marketing opportunity was killing Wooberg before he ever got out of the box <laughs> I'm sure there are some Wooberg lovers out there but uh... Woo! Berg yeah I'm not sure who Wooberg is supposed to appeal to. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> no, I watched the video. For those of you who don't know, the, the Wooberg marketing video is a puppet that is uh, basically a Gen X style rude puppet that apparently is supposed to make you want to go play Friday Night Magic. And he pretty much spends the entire time being like a jerk to his buddy who's the star of the commercial, if he's not the star of the commercial. <laughs> How did you do today, Wooberg? Well, I'm gonna take your F&M foil, I'm gonna try to rip off your friends and try to cheat at magic. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had waffles in his backpack. Yeah, it makes me wanna go play F&M. <laughs> uh, what I, you know what makes me actually wanna play magic? Magic cards. Watching <laughs> magic makes me wanna play magic. <laughs> Yeah, I've been at a lot of the Star That's City games. That's what made games. me want to play Magic. I saw Magic cards and said, I want to play that game. Uh, no, like, watching Magic makes me want to play Magic. I I've watched about almost, uh, we're, we're not quite there, but we're getting close to the 30-hour mark of watching Magic. And, man, I am really, really hungry to play Magic. For those of you who come to the Star City Games events, you'll know that uh, I carry decks with me of most of the, archety of most of the formats. And as soon as I get a chance, I'm like trying to find people. Hey, you want to play standard? You want to play modern? You want to play legacy? I definitely saw you, uh, saw you playing some legacy a little while ago. Yeah, uh, speed well, legacy. Speed legacy, which is hard to do when you're playing um, bug control. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I definitely got smacked down a little bit today in modern by uh, the Malira combo deck, Malira with persist creatures, and then a sacrifice outlet. Though, uh, the first time I died, I can't remember the name of it, it's, uh, whenever a creature comes into play, untap this artifact, it's, a uh, three casting cost artifact, tap to deal a damage. Uh, um, um, I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't remember the name of the artifact. Is it Blasting Station? Blasting Station, There yeah. we go. I got blasted out by a Malira, um, Blasting Station Kitchen Finks. He's like, I'll gain infinite life and you can take an infinite damage. <laughs> I'm like, actually, you're, you're not gonna gain infinite life, I don't think, uh because I'm going to be dead first. <laughs> Kurt Spice, winner of the second game, means Bobby Sullivan is going to be able to go first in this decisive third game. Very dangerous because of the noble hierarchs and birds of paradise that can let him push into powerful threats before Kurt gets set up. Both of these players vying for a uh, an opportunity to play versus Alex Bertoncini in the finals. Alex Bertoncini, who uh, received a concession from his semifinals opponent, 
after a prize split sort of agreement. So we know that uh, the finals will be Alex Bertoncini with no rug versus either Bobby Sullivan with no rug or Kurt Spice with blue white stone blade. Just an idea. If you have a better one, probably. You have a better one. Thank you. All right, Island Go from Bobby. It's a rare opener for, for uh, the no rug deck. And then the turn, end of your turnitis, Brainstorm. <laughs> there it is. Kurt looks at herself. Okay, I see that Bobby has lands in his hand. I don't like that end of your turn, Brainstorm. I would have held on to that, and he already had that land and he needed, and uh, I, I, I don't know. I, seems like a waste. Well, yes. Turn two, Misty Rainforest. AJ Soccer would tell you you don't have to, you don't uh, have to use brainstorm you get to use brainstorm exactly exactly that is that is not a don't you don't get trapped by the the article that has you taught hey I should use my mana every turn you know usually you should use your mana every turn but sometimes you can gain some value by not using your mana. And Bobby Sullivan gets a forest making him have his two colors that are his primary colors for his deck, Wasteland Proof and Ready. Yeah, a Ghost Quarter would actually be pretty effective against Bobby Sullivan. At least at this point. We see a Noble Hierarch in hand, a Red Elemental Blast, a Lightning Bolt, I think I see a Tarmogoyf. Noble Hierarch gets dropped down on the table. Kurt says okay, untaps, well nothing to untap, but takes his turn, lays a Tundra and says go. Bobby untaps, draws an Ancient Grudge, lays a Misty Rainforest, and uh, probably is going to cast what looks like a Green Sun Zenith here. Uh, it's definitely a Green Sun Zenith. One, two, three. Green Sun Zenith for two. Kurt says Brainstorm in response. He's got a Force of Will. I think he's got a Swords to Plowshares in his hand as well. You'll notice that Kurt Spice's Brainstorm is going to have the benefit of a full shuffle effect here. So it's a more effective Brainstorm than Bobby Sullivan's was. Green Sun Zenith resolves. Tarmogoyf, the likely candidate. He could choose if he hasn't sided it out. Scavenging Goose, but Tarmogoyf seems better to me right now. Just better in general in this matchup. And it is a Birds of, Birds Paradise. of Paradise. Going over a, over the uh, top. Spell Snare. So that Spell Snare won't hit him. Um, yeah. Avoiding the Spell Snare by paying three to cast a Birds of Paradise off of Green Sun Zenith where it, when he only needed the two. There is no Spell Snare in Kurt Spice, Spice's uh, deck though. Huh, interesting. wonder what that was about then. He might have... He, Just he, forgot. He gets to look at the deck right, list. doesn't have it sitting in he front of him. He doesn't get to have it sitting in front of him. Yeah, so he may have just been... I mean, uh, I think this match started about an hour, maybe longer ago. Yeah. Definitely seems like uh, the well, game two was very, yeah. very long. Dryad Arbor. Lots of mana out there. Dryad Arbor attacks. Comes in for two, a little boost from the um, Noble Hire. A fetch from uh, Kurt Spice. Gets his red source.
Mutable. End of the turn. Vendillion click. click. Rattle or Pyroblast. Yep. Pyroblast resolves, knocking that Vendillion click off the stack and into Bobby's graveyard. So Bobby now untaps, draws his card. Has access to five mana here. If, uh, if he plays a land, he'll have six. A lot of mana. A lot of mana creatures. It seems like uh, access to six mana is a lot more frightening in standard right now. But there is a Jace the Mind Sculptor, someone who you do not see in standard right now. Force of, of will. Force of will for the uh, for the Jace. We got a pyro, a red elemental blast that Bobby could fight this with. I predict we're gonna see it. Looks like it. Red elemental blast, mental misstep. Yeah. And the the big fight over uh, Jace pushes Kurt Spice his control cards down a little bit. Yeah. And that's a. Uh, Wrath relevant. of God. Ooh, there Ooh. we go. That is a way to Ouch. stop the natural order. <laughs> Bobby Sullivan's board more than halved. Dryad Arbor, Noble Hierarch, Bird of Paradise, all dead. And that uh, once, nat once awesome looking natural order now looks a little bit weak. Kurt Spice, six lands to uh, Bobby Sullivan's three. Go, go, go. Draw, go. Draw, go. Not to draw, go, but it's not a lot, I, of, a lot of thinking, draw, I, go. I think I see Bolt, Natural Order, Red Elemental Blast, Jace, and Ancient Grudge in Bobby Sullivan's hand. And uh, Kurt Wastelands, that volcanic island. That's his only red source. Here's a a uh, Tarmogoyf oh, off the top. Source to Plowshares in Kurt Spice's hand. Swords. <laughs> Remove that guy from the game. Bobby takes a moment of pause to look through his graveyard, and then lets the Tarmogoyf die. Let's yeah, counting the uh, counting the life gain there. I think. Yep. And Kurt, oh, the Stoneforge Mystic. Kurt has uh, one of Jace's good buddies from Worldwake, Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge looking for a sort of feast and famine. Bobby untaps, draws, cannot even cast an ancient rug in hand. <laughs> it's only a forest and an island in play. It does protect him from wasteland, but it also means that his uh, diversity of mana is pretty weak. Main phase brainstorm, as you said. And it looks like he's going to have access to, uh, to red, I believe, here if he so chooses. There's a Misty Rainforest for Bobby. Could untaps, draws a card, and... Uh, Look at that hand. Force of Will. Whose hand are you looking at? I'm looking at Kurt's, <laughs> Kurt Spice's hand. So many lands in play, so many... Uh, so many good cards in hand. I mean, the Ancient Grudge is... All that's really, I think, keeping Bobby from being in a position where I would tell him just to scoop it up. Kurt Spice is able to, um, with so much mana open, easily protect a batter skull. He, he uh, searched for the Sword of Feast and Famine. Oh, did he? I'm sorry, if, my bad. Uh, he may have it in hand, the batter skull. Thank he you Never that. quite saw it, but... Bobby Sullivan fetching out. Let's see if it's going to be a volcanic island? Yeah, a volcanic island. And we're opening the gates. <laughs> a 
lots of noise in the background as people clean up the event site, pack things up. All right, so Bobby untaps, draws a card. Is that another natural order? I think it may have been, but he, uh, yeah, I think it is. It is. No, is that Green Sun Green Zenith? Green Sun Zenith, okay. Yeah, yeah for a second it did the, look The like green that. color is They a, both have a kind of a similar look to them. A dark green hue on the edge of them. Yeah. Across the uh, the room, Glenn Jones is uh, enjoying his rest while he waits for this match to finish. <laughs> Where is he? I didn't see looks it. like he uh, looks like he might be involved in oh, a, there he is. a boxing match or something over there. Oh, oh, he's sparring. <laughs> 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 All right, so Sword of Feast and Famine filed in. <laughs> Sword of Feast and Famine and Jace. Look at that. Let's go. Oh my do you, gosh. Do you recognize any of those cards from? Uh, uh, it from looks Magic? like standard two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe standard with plus plus. So here's a force of will removing Jace for uh, for Kurt, Curtis Jace. I'm having a good old time too. No, I'm ha I I love this. I'm not lying. I I love it. I love watching uh this kind of matchup. So Jace is indeed countered. Scalding Tarn cracked for Kurt. Gets a volcanic island. Second Scalding Tarn. Scalding Tarn. Scalding Karn? Scalding Karn. <laughs> Scalding Karn. You know, if you a had a Scald in play and there was a Karn, you could Scald Karn. You could. You could also <laughs> just kind of burn him with fire. Scalding Karn. There's an ancient grudge for the sword. Stoneforge Mystic playing Squire, knocking Bobby from 21 to 20. <laughs> Bobby has been the recipient of many swords to plowshares helps. <laughs> you know, like, what do we have here? A natural order, a mental misstep, a lightning bolt, and a... I don't want to say... Uh... I'm having trouble. Oh, green, green sun. sun we knew that. Yeah, yeah, we, we knew, knew that. that. So, you know, maybe it's just me. I've been curious about this this whole weekend. Is uh, one eternal witness just not good enough for no rug? I don't know. I feel like, uh, I mean, I feel like I thought I saw a list with eternal witness in it today. I don't know if it was a no rug, though. It may have been a different deck. Yeah. For those of you out there who are uh, no rug experts, why don't you let us know? What do you think about the idea of eternal witness in, uh, in, in no rug or even in no bant? Is there just not enough room for it? Uh, is it too weak? Or is it worth considering? So, Bobby Green Sun Zeniths for a Noble Hierarch, setting himself up for a natural order into Progenitus situation, or natural order into uh, any green creature. Kurt plays a second Squire Forge Mystic. <laughs> Resolved. Batter Skull. Batter Skull. He get, which he can violin with the other Stoneforge Mystic. Remember, there is an ancient grudge in the graveyard for Bobby. That's true. All it takes, though, is three mana available for Kurt just to dodge. Natural order. Is that what you got to be wondering. Is, he drew, what did he draw? Um, that final card. Um, in the, there's a mental misstep, lightning bolt, natural order, and a something. card I can't quite tell what right. it is. That's what I'm wondering about. Is that the floral spasm scavenging hues? <laughs> I don't think it's scavenging hues. I hope it's not. No, uh, it's, it's a, a green sun. Yeah, that's what I was thinking it was. But I thought, <laughs> I thought no, he, was, he already used that. Well, he can draw another one. I think you just go for it here and just hope, 
hope, hope that Kurt does not have the answer. You've exhausted a lot of Kurt, Kurt's answers. Does yeah. it work? Does natural order work? Now, Kurt, not only, uh, Kurt has five mana open for a force of will. And there we go. Tapped out. Kurt actually does not have to worry about the ancient grudge this moment, so he can just put the batter skull into play at the end of the turn. Which he uh, certainly does. There's the germ. And this is going to be the beginning of the end, I think, for it's Bobby. It's a pokey germ. So, uh, to answer a question earlier that you asked, mm -hmm. what my favorite creature is, I came up with it after thinking through all of the decks I've ever built and all of the decks that I've ever done anything with. And uh, it's a tie. <laughs> Wall of Roots mm -hmm. and Dwarven Blast Miner. Interesting. Two favorite creatures. So, real quick, we just have uh, Stoneforge Mystic attacking alongside a Muta Vault and a Germ. And in a Wasteland to get rid of the only non basic land. Wow. So, uh, I think he just swung in for seven, I want to say, and, uh, and gained some life in the process. I've been watching Four, this five, entire seven. game thinking about what a Blast Miner would do if it was able to live. Now, remind Ooh. everybody what those two cards that you mentioned do. I know Dwarven what, well, Blast Miner is red and a one. It also has Morph, but red and a 1 for a 1-1 one, one Dwarf that for tap it and red 2, you can destroy a non-basic land. Wow. Now, the Morph cost is red. Okay. But it just sits back there and destroys non-basic lands for, uh, for mana and tap, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Just casts stone, it casts uh, non-basic killing stone rain. That's it's, its over, spell over that it again. casts. Wow. So here we go. Ancient Grudge looks like it's getting flashed back. And, uh, and Batter, Batter Skull, Skull just goes back, back to the hand. Uses stone. up, exhausts that Ancient Grudge. And there's a, a Stoneforge Mystic just waiting, just waiting to put it back down. Yep. So uh, looks like three more in. Bobby goes to ten. I think we're about to see a uh, Kurt Spies, Alex Bertoncini. The Green Sun Zena. For Uno. Numero mm -hmm. Uno. Nothing he can get here other than uh, Noble Hierarch or Dryad Arbor. We've already seen at least one Dryad Arbor in play. Yep. And the bird that was in his deck is now That's in the graveyard. True, yeah. In the graveyard already. Very true. So Noble Hierarch comes down and uh, Kurt vials in the Batter Skull with Stoneforge Mystic. I'm trying to come up with some set of plays that would bring uh, Bobby Sullivan back into this game, and I can't come up with it. Kurt doing some math here. Here they come. With everything. It's an attack for eight. And apparently it all goes through, so... Kurt goes there back up to go. 20. Go. Well, extends there the it hand. is. Kurt, Kurt Spice. Spice. Congratulations to Kurt for making it to the finals here of the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Boston. Now it's, we just uh, have to uh, wait for uh, the inevitable 